People have been asking me, what is with this whole conifer fixation? And they've also been asking me what I'm doing with a thermometer outside. Well, the thermometer is to prove a point. The other night in my area, the temperatures were down into the single digits as wind chill goes, and tonight the lows will be in the 30s. So perennials and annuals and deciduous trees, they're not doing all that much. The conifers, on the other hand, are. So let's start our conifer garden tour. For those of you that are conifer fans, this will be cool because you'll get to see a lot of cool pictures of conifers and maybe we'll learn a thing or two along the way. For those of you that are totally new to conifers or just getting into gardening in general, this will be good because maybe you'll learn something and you'll also get to see cool pictures of conifers. So let's not waste any time at all. Let's start off with my friend here, Pinus virginiensis Waits Golden, which is a really cool pine tree. Now from my region of the country where it gets a little bit warmer and the summers are humid, pines do extremely well, in particular Virginiansis, which is native to this region of the country. So what makes Waits Golden so neat? Well, duh, the golden color. The gold color will last throughout winter and then in the spring, he'll start to turn back into a greenish tone and always sort of have a lime green color to him, not a real strong forest green color that you might think of with pine trees. Now for the Southeast where I live, this is a great tree. They're native in this region. So he'll do extremely well in our hot and humid summer conditions. Now, a couple things about this particular tree. First off, when I got it, it was absolutely, as you can tell, pretty big. It was in a 10 gallon container and had been at the nursery way too long. And you'll see the way I planted it was a little bit higher. And for those of you that have clay soils, this is gonna be an important tip. Plant almost above your soil grade, planting in what's referred to as a berm sometimes. What I do is dig out a large wide area. So I dig wider than I do deeper. And then I mound that native soil back around the root ball of the tree. The reason being, Clay soil isn't that great at drainage, and that will kill a conifer quicker than anything, is poor drainage. So think not so much about digging deep holes, but wide holes that will loosen your soil a little bit and then mound it above that. So our next conifer is also a pine, Pinus bungiana silver ghost, the lace bark pine. Now, here's a quick story about this one. Eventually, it will be a very large, multi-trunked tree. Now, the key thing to a lace bark pine, you would imagine, it's bark. It will be a beautiful silver and black with patches, really gorgeous pine. Now, I wanted a large one. Unfortunately, you just can't find one. So I had to settle for a little bit of a smaller one. If you get into conifers, that's one thing you'll find. You'll see an awesome, mature specimen tree photo somewhere and then you'll only be able to find little ones out there and available. So you'll have to get your small one and just watch it grow. And that's what I'm gonna do with this one. Now, as the sun starts to go down behind the hillside on my property, we're gonna get ready to wrap up our first conifer garden tour. But I wanted to finish with what I consider one of those conifers that's sort of waiting for its time. This is Picea pungens straw. Now, right now, when you look at it, you go, eh, sort of an off green kind of color, not all that exciting. But eventually, it will take on some new growth that'll have a yellow tone to it, and eventually, it will keep some of that yellowy golden tone throughout the year. And I have seen pictures of some mature Picea pungens straw that are absolutely stunning, and eventually, hope this one will get there too. So sometimes, you gotta wait for them to grow, and sometimes you have to wait for them to take on those distinct characteristics that you want. So let's end our conifer garden part one tour with this. Pinus parviflora temploff. Now, first off, I just like to say parviflora. I'll get that out of the way. When I bought this tree, as you can see, it's pretty large. It was in bad condition and the branching here is very sparse, but the root condition is really what concerned me. I got a good price on it, large tree, took it home, I was excited, pulled it out of the pot and the roots looked bad. What do I mean by bad? Well, if you could picture fettuccine looking black bad. 
So I root pruned it heavily, which if you've listened to my podcast with Dr. Linda Chalker Scott, you heard us discuss the issue of root pruning and how to deal with trees like this one that were severely root bound and the roots were in overall bad condition. So far, about eight months in the ground, no worse the wear, hasn't deteriorated in any way whatsoever. Hopefully the branching will improve in the future as it gets acclimated to its new home. And if it doesn't, I'm okay with that too. So next week, part two of our conifer garden tour, and even more exciting than that, the expansion project, which is going on behind me with a bunch of conifers and Japanese maples. <music>